It's hard to fully comprehend, but more than four months since hurricanes swept through the Caribbean, about half of Puerto Ricans remain without electricity. This week, Governor Ricardo Rosseo announced the island's public energy monopoly would be sold off to private companies following a series of scandals. In the first of two reports from Puerto Rico, special correspondent Monica Villamizar looks at what's behind the delay in restoring power and how people are coping. When Hurricane Maria struck in September, fires broke out and victims had to run to the station to inform firefighter Ronald Vega and his colleagues. There was no way to dial 911. This fire station in the eastern town of Naguabo is now functioning normally. But at Ronald Vega's home nearby, there is no electricity. He uses a generator at night and relies on emergency food aid. The signs of water damage still loom above his head. It's not easy. It's such a tough situation. I'm paying at least $15 a day for the fuel of my generator during the week. That's every day. As a firefighter, Vega makes less than $20,000 a year. Before the storm, he was already supplementing his income with part-time work at Walgreens. Four months after the storm, about 450,000 of the 1.5 million electricity customers are without service. Blackouts occur regularly, for hours at a time, even in San Juan. Outside the capital, destruction remains. In Salinas, home to the island's largest power plant, barber Julio Ortiz set up shop at a ruined gas station. It took him three months to find an inverter to connect his razors to the car battery. People have to survive one way or another. I have to make it happen somehow, because, you know, money doesn't grow on trees. The response here remains an emergency. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers coordinates repairs by private contractors using dollars from FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency. We are standing at the laydown yard where all our larger items come into. The Army Corps oversees materials distributed across the island. But under the Federal Stafford Act, FEMA is only allowed to restore infrastructure exactly as it was before a disaster. In some cases, materials in Puerto Rico were so outdated that the Corps had to get them made especially for the island, furthering delays. It really doesn't allow to do more resilient or hardening work that Puerto Rico's grid definitely needs. Colonel John Lloyd directs the Army Corps' operation from the headquarters of the electric utility. So what's the point of restoring it to something old and essentially, you know, in bad shape? The work that we are doing uh, does, uh, it brings it up to code. Uh, in many cases, the, the, uh, the grid wasn't to uh, current code. And when do you think everybody will have power again? We'll slowly get more customers online. I think by the middle of March, end of March, we're gonna see the majority of customers with power. Many people have accused Puerto Rico's only electric utility company, PREPA, of being corrupt and wasteful. Before the storm, PREPA was bankrupt and it saved money by cutting down on important maintenance. After the storm, PREPA contracted Whitefish, a small Montana-based firm, for repairs it could not complete. The contract was canceled, but PREPA still has to pay Whitefish more than 100 million for work done. El sistema de energía. And then this week, Puerto Rican governor announced that PREPA will be privatized over the next 18 months. Comenzará el proceso. The process will begin for PREPA assets to be sold to companies who will transform the generation system into a modern, efficient, and less expensive one for the people. The privatization is not expected to affect the repair schedule. About 80 percent of electrical infrastructure was destroyed. PREPA told us that restoring power everywhere on the island, not just the majority, is expected to take at least until May, eight months after Hurricane Maria. Houses across the countryside are lined with blue tarp on their roofs. But not everyone is waiting for outside help to move forward with repairs. We don't depend upon the grid to supply the energy needs of Casa Pueblo. Hola. Arturo Masol de La is the head of Casa Pueblo, an environmental organization in Adjuntas. This local community center has been running on solar energy since 1999. The sun powers everything, from industrial coffee grinders to medicine refrigerators, as well as a radio station. Lighting was a, a critical thing, and it was a way to, to teach people how inexpensive, easy is to embrace uh, renewable energy sources like the sun, in which you are less vulnerable, 
because the, the capture of the energy and the utilization of the energy is at the point of consumption. Casa Pueblo is technically still connected to the grid, but it creates so much power that it can send it back into the system. The Puerto Rican government still hasn't approved regulations for people to provide power to the grid with solar. In addition to the costs of infrastructure, that's one more barrier to making alternative energy widespread. The government does plan to increase renewable power from only a small amount to 30 percent of the island's energy, so it can be more prepared for the next hurricane. This place became a very important power source for the entire community after the hurricane. People were coming here to charge their phones and get solar lamps and refrigerators. And the radio station never stopped broadcasting because it runs on solar energy. It's a community station where people call in to request their favorite salsa songs and make dedications to friends and family. In the hills around his town, Arturo has installed solar power systems to connect vulnerable people isolated from the power network. Jonathan is disabled, living with his grandmother, Luz Leida Plaza. With solar, they have lights and power for their phones and a tiny fridge for medicine. The same system powers a neighbor's dialysis machine. Before they had a solar system, my neighbor told me he had to connect his mother's machine to a car battery all night. It's a familiar story to Ronald Vega. In some places, they are fighting, fighting to get electricity. People in many villages say they feel that they've simply been forgotten. And that's because in many places they are still without power and lights, and it's been more than 116 days. And like Casa Pueblo, his fire station is now prepared. Thanks to a solar power system brought to the island by Las Vegas firefighters, they are strong enough to weather the next hurricane. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Monica Villamizar in Puerto Rico. And in the coming days, we'll continue our series after the storms with additional reports from Puerto Rico and from Texas.